fruitfulness. Read Daniel 6 verse 10. You realize that Daniel was not just praying because the edict has been signed and sent out. The Bible says he prayed and gave thanks to God just as he had done before. He had a covenant with God that no rule, no command could break. If visitors come to his house, his covenant is to be kept with God. And it's because of that that I'm saying there are those who want to get into a covenant, and especially as they begin this year, a covenant with God, to live a life that will reflect God in their life at another level. You have enjoyed what you have enjoyed, but you are saying, God, I want to see. Even Moses, after walking with God at a point, in the middle of the journey, he says, God, uh, I also feel like I want to see you. <laughs> I want to see you. And that's what we are saying. And for that, we are saying we will make some sacrifice. One, that we will fast through the 21 days. Two, that we will give out whatever we say from our fasting. Three, we will be available every morning for the 21 days. Now you know, so that if you need to exit the group, you can exit. <laughs> yes. And we will be making some covenants with God about our relationship with him, about our commitment to the things of God, and all that concern our faith in him. All within the premises of scripture. Amen? And I believe as I share briefly this morning, I'll be able to bring up uh, a bit of that out. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we take the next a couple of minutes to talk about your word, I pray that it will be clear, it will be evident that you are the Lord God who has given us this year that we may honor you and bring your glory. So speak to us because we are listening in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 4 and 5 is where I want us to read and as we, we get there, maybe just to remind us that in IDC we have a culture. We have a culture of having a direction every year to guide ourselves on what we pray about and what we preach about, what we give main focus in 2020, we end a theme, Hold Family Unto Christ. This theme was conceived back in 2019. We didn't know that COVID was on the way coming. But when COVID came, God had prepared us and had given us a theme that held us and guided us on holding on to him in such a perilous time. In 2021, our theme was journeying with God's presence. And again, the choice of words. We realize Moses asked the presence of God to go with him. Daniel, uh, David talks about desiring to dwell in the presence of God. And so we borrowed those words and we desired to journey with God's presence. Some may feel like, why not just journey with God? Well, um, we are guided by scripture and we want to <laughs> not promote ourselves above where we are. We are human, he is God. And so we can allow his presence, which we see our predecessors who were special and were honored by God. Whatever they did then, we can copy those good things. In journeying with God, we learned that it is also good to strengthen our board as believers. And so 2022, our focus was 
love others as, as Christ loves. And so we talked about love. No wonder we had quite a number of weddings in 2022. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's good to learn to love and love with a pure heart. And we talked about many things about love here. We focused largely on strengthening our commitment to the body of Christ, to one another, and that was a great year. And as we strengthened our board, we thought, well, in 2022, I know we also talked about loving our neighbors and people out there by missions, going out for reaching out to them. But we also, uh, towards the end of the year, felt the Lord telling us now, you have looked a bit inside, look also outside. And so last year, we were mobilizing ourselves and talking about go ye, becoming a witness, what would be required, how do we uh, make disciples of the nations. And towards the end of last year, uh, the the pastorate went out in prayer and listening to God. And the Lord laid a burden in our hearts that it is clear, and I know it has come from this pulpit a couple of times, that um, there is a trend that is developing in the world where Christianity is slowly but surely being relegated to convenience. So that, he said, two or three weeks ago, one of the largest church formations in the world accepted and have now agreed to preside and to bless same-sex marriages. If you have any doubt, please consult with me. Scripture is rich with how God abhors. It's such an abomination to God. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, he says, people who engage in these kind of practices, I add them over to the cravings of their body so that they can be destroyed by them. It's such a serious thing. And one church Please, on this, allow me to say, church in quote. Because one church after another, they say, God is mistaken furthermore. I think for us, we can accept it. That's why we have gay bishops and gay ministers. That's why now we have churches blessing same-sex marriages. And those things are happening. Christianity is slowly but surely being relegated. And I, I didn't prepare for this, but as I was mentioning it, it dropped in my mind. I'm aware of some of those countries that fight for that and push for it, that actually God is slowly giving them over and giving their land to others. Just check what is happening in Europe. Whether they like it or not, Europe native community is dying and being taken over by others. The year after year, they are increasing import of labor. They are high technology notwithstanding. They can't cope. Why? The average fertility in Europe is 11%. So for every 10 couples, only one has two children. If two couples have two children each out of 10, there's one couple that will not get a child. They will bequeath a dog or a cat, whatever they, they have acquired. You can get that information online. And so we are saying, slowly, immigrants 
And that's why some cities that were fully Christian, you think that they went slow in believing, but I'm sorry. I'm aware because, again, from the mission front, we monitor trends. And um, the Muslims in Europe have a commitment that each man will have at least 24 children. When the native, two couples are getting one child, so if they were 20 for 10 couples, is 20 people, how many children do they leave behind? <laughs> 20 will leave 11, because it's 11 percent. Um, 20 people will leave 11, the 11 will leave how many? and the numbers will go down like that, instead of growing. I know there are some Christian couples in Europe. I have a friend who has five children, and their sister is, uh, who happens to my, be my friend, is also aiming. That. Now they have two, but she told me they, she wants she want five. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know there are people that, but when they get like that, there are enough couples that are gay and they cannot get children, so they can only adopt, okay? They are same sex, so they can't get. That's where the mathematics gets awkward. And so they have to depend. What am I saying? There is a wave! And it's not, I mentioned Europe generally, some countries are ahead of others. It's cutting to the west. America is right in the middle of it. And on and on. And guess what? It is percolating. Not slowly. So fast in our urban community where you belong. So the faith is becoming relativity, convenience, and things like that. Things that God commanded must not be done are being accepted. Things that God commanded must be done are being now considered it's okay, maybe it's not okay. You don't have to. And that's why we are saying even in prayer, we want to do it differently, friends. It is in the light of this that we encourage you to join with Daniel to draw from scripture so that 2024 focus will be living a life as a Christian that is not ambiguous. It's living a life that is not based on circumstances. It is based on my faith in the one that I believe. And that kind of a life is what we are calling evident allegiance to God. So our theme for 2024 is evident allegiance to God. Daniel chapter 6 verse 4, the Bible says, the administrators and satraps, I want to believe some part is covered on my screen, the administrators and satraps therefore kept trying to find a charge against Daniel regarding the kingdom but they could fight no charge or corruption for he was trustworthy and no negligence or corruption was found in him verse 5 then this man said we will never find any charge against this Daniel unless we find something against, uh, against him concerning the law of his God. We are talking of a Christian like you. You may say this day Christ did not come. Remember the Bible says, through him all things were made. <laughs> And without him, nothing that was made that does exist. So he was there in the beginning. But what we are saying is that this man of God, this God-fearer, this God-honoring man 
which basically is what Christ embodies. When Christ came here, he says, I do nothing except what I see my father doing. He does not move his leg without God. And so, we see the lifestyle in the Bible across was a lifestyle that esteemed God highly. Starting from Genesis. You know, God, when he made a covenant with Abraham, Genesis 12, from verse 1, he told him, I will bless you so that you can become a blessing. And God maintains that in chapter 15 of Genesis. Um, he makes a covenant. And he tells Abraham, I will be your shield and your great reward. He moves on in Genesis 17 as he reminds Abraham that delay is not denial. Because as you get to Genesis 17 and verse 1, the man Abraham is now how many years? 99. And God tells him, my friend, don't be anxious of anything. The only thing I require of you is that you live in my presence and be devout. Praise the Lord. I like the introduction. I am the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. So walk before me and be blameless. That's what some versions would put it. And so what we see in the Bible is a relationship with God where people did not consider God based on convenience. God talks to this man and he tells him, walk before me. And there was a promise of increase and a promise of blessing. Oh, it's the Old Testament. Of course, we can see it across in Exodus as Moses walked with God. We see some reverence to God that was not ready to be compromised for anything. And that cuts across the Old Testament. You get into the New Testament and Jesus himself introduces it. You know, maybe before I talk about Jesus, even now when God moved from Abraham to Israel, the community, the, the, the nation of Israel, he tells them that he gives them laws. And when he gives them the law by which they must live, he tells them other nations will learn of your laws and seek me. So they were there as an example. They were to stand out for God so that no one has a doubt about God. But coming quickly then to Jesus, Jesus comes here and he tells us, you are the light. You are the salt. Now, salt cannot be handled the same as food. You can take a spoon full of food. Try a spoon full of salt. That statement is loaded. It means that the world will be totally different from you. When Jesus says you are the light, please understand that the world will be covered with darkness. My question is, who will be evidently clear that this one stands for God when everyone else and the majority of the world is speaking darkness? Who? Who stands to be counted? No wonder several times in the Old Testament God looks around and finds no one. No one to be counted. Yet we are here thinking that we can just conform. Jesus left no doubt when in Matthew 10, he said verse 33, I guess, he tells his disciples, my friends, 
please be informed that in this journey things are going to be serious. Yeah? You will have circumstances where you will be required to deny me. Is that the one? But whoever denies me before men, rest assured, I will also deny them before my father in heaven. Now, with this, we still think we can compromise and not seek to honor God and expect things to be okay. I think this is a serious, serious call. That's why Paul in Philippians 1 and verse 27 tells those that had believed through his preaching he tells them, whatever happens, please, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Because some people will join you in the faith who will conduct themselves according to the gospels that are being preached around. But for you, man of God, for you who have believed, Conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel. It's not okay. It's not okay to work in an office and nobody can testify of your faith. It's not okay. Allow me to say it's not okay for you to do business and nobody can distinguish between your rules of the game and the rules of the rest. I've shared my testimony here of having been in the matatu industry. Even this morning as we were coming near the flyover, you know, a policeman was just getting behind the matatu and uh, the conductor extending. And I saw him looking at how much he, he is being given so that he can know whether to accept or not. I was in that industry. And at some point, they accepted that. When I started, I would be taken to court and they say, Kwan you nafikiri when your pastor wa kwanza hapa? Tumiona wengi. We have seen many pastors and they give bribes. Who are you to say you, you can't give something? Your vehicle will not operate without you giving something. And I'd be fined and I pay. I've shared that before. Yeah. Because I want my vehicle back to the road. And I know the chaos and the corruption of the system. Yeah. I was there. I left when I wanted. But by the time I left, every route I operated. Initially, I would suffer. But along the way, like it happened, and I think I've mentioned here, my Matatu was at current police station. I don't know what happened, and the OCS walked out of the, his office, and he noticed my vehicle, and he knew. And I'm told, <laughs> he just called, who has brought this vehicle here? Soon are you, your pastor, Tatu Akitu? Watch a yende. Because it's not being taken there for a charge because there is something wrong. It's just that they want Kitu. How will we, can we be taken to court? And that's why I don't know whether the banner, the current, um, what do we call it? The cover page. <laughs> um, of our, uh, uh, yes, you can see it, I hope. There's a hammer. Oh, you mean we are good? Oh, oh, Kige. Oh, oh. Praise the Lord. I like working with some guys. <laughs> this man is a blessing. This man is a blessing for sure. You can appreciate him again. Yes. 
Yeah, I know we were through by Wednesday and agreed that it can be printed, um, but I imagined, but who is like my son? It's good to have a co-worker and a son you are proud of. So we are saying that we must be different. You know what that symbolizes? A court of law. But we are saying the world may judge you by their own standards, by their own rules. But we will judge ourselves by another law. Praise the Lord. And it is open for everyone to see. I want my Christianity Uh, <laughs> this, which day was that I had gone to Joska, see if you can remind me. I, 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 I do business, and part of the business I do is, it's a risky business. I'm in the money market. So I preside of an organization that lends money. And I approve some people to be auctioned. And as many of them are Christians because I don't want them to go to hell at, as thieves. So the better thing is to have them auctioned so that the owner's money is paid and they can repent. So I, I'm the one who puts the, the last signature <laughs> on that approval sheet. <laughs> and we were almost getting there with a client and I was telling them, let me tell you, I'm in business, but I want after doing business, I must get to heaven. So I will not just compromise things because I'm a Christian. No. I'll not just say it's okay. When you come and give me a plan and tell me, you know, my people go to the field, they do their due diligence, you fake documents and show us how much your business is making, and then you commit that per day you can pay a thousand and per week you can't pay 500. It doesn't matter how many praise the Lord you told me when you came to the office. It doesn't matter. And please allow me to say this is serious. When we began, we were giving many pastors loans. Today if you come as a pastor, you are checked three times, not twice. Because it's, it cuts across. What I'm saying is, please understand. The standards have been compromised. If you look for evidence, it is lacking. It is lacking. I was reflecting and meditating on this with gratitude. I have served in this university. I'm not a staff. But I've enjoyed the respect of some of the leaders that God has given to IDC. Allow me to proudly say, I have enjoyed working with Professor Maina to any office in this university. Because his integrity in the journey, I believe, has given me favor. Even as he exited the stage as a chairman, I had worked with him to the DVCs, to the VCs. So even as he exited, I can now walk to those offices and continue enjoying the favor <laughs> and the grace of God because he has respect. He has a testimony for the people who work with him. Praise the Lord. Evidence. If you want to prove whether he is a serious Christian or not, and look for evidence within Jacob, it will be plenty. He will be jailed. The hammer will go down guilty as charged. Because there is enough evidence to tell you that this man is a Christian. At least in the common area where he is found, people know. 
just like it was with Daniel. Including this week, I was here on Thursday. And uh, you know the university, I think the official opening was Friday for staff. So the staff had not opened. And uh, let me confess my sins, you know. I met somebody who needed to give me access somewhere. And uh, the first time I think I interacted with him, I was with Dr. Wanyama, our current chair. So you can guess what I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I told him, you remember that uh, we were doing with uh, Dr. Wanyama? Yes, uh, I want to do something about it, you know. Oh, Dr. Wanyama, okay, okay, okay. And doors opened for me, okay. <laughs> Later in the day, I called him. Did I call you? Yes. I called him and greeted him. I didn't tell him why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I had enjoyed favor because of a testimony of somebody who fears God, who people know that he is a believer. Who can give a testimony about you? Who can testify that you know God. This year, we want to take time and just talk about that. We want to talk about cultivating evident allegiance to God. That people looking for reasons and excuses to accuse us of because of our faith, they can actually get us to prison. If the excuse, did you hear verse 5? The only way you can jail Daniel is to come up with a law that will tell him to do things against his God. That is the only way you can get Daniel to prison. Otherwise, if you look for corruption, you know there are things that are mentioned uh, in that Daniel uh, 6 verse 4 uh, and 5. If you look for charges against that man, give me verse, uh, verse, verse 4. If you look for negligence, nothing. Look for corruption, nothing. Travel, trustworthiness, a hundred percent. I mean, you look for those things, and just like I've said with the people that God has privileged me to work with, if they are to be jailed, it will be for not being negligence. It will be for not being corrupt. It will be for practicing uttermost trustworthiness. Praise the Lord. As we reasoned through this journey, we felt that the elements that will build us to one stage, number one, willful commitment to God. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 The Bible says, Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. We don't see him being coerced. Hello? We don't see him being pushed. He purposed in his heart. When the edict was signed in chapter 6 that people should not pray to another God except the king, my friend, the guy prayed as usual. Willfully. No push. No pressure. He purposed. When Abraham was told to sacrifice his son, willful commitment to God. Remember you have waited for a son until you are age 100 and then God asks for that son. Abraham was not coerced. Willingly and readily. The Bible says the next morning. Praise God. 
willful commitment. That is what we want to spend the first three months of this year talking about. Pastor Donga will be telling us a little more about that next Sunday. But I want us to know that if we want to make progress in our journey with God, we have to cultivate willful commitment to God. We don't need to be pushed. We don't need to be coerced. The basis of this commitment, as Second Timothy 2 verse 12 will tell us, is our knowledge of God. And I want to encourage us. Second Timothy 2 verse 12. There's something that Paul talks about. One twelve. Chapter one twelve. Second Timothy chapter one twelve. Thank you. And that is why I suffer these things. But I am not ashamed because I know him whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what I have, what has been entrusted to me until that day. He is able to guard my faith in me. God is able. But please note, when you know him whom you have believed, when you know your God, it is this knowledge that defies shame. It is this knowledge that defies fear. So that when the end it is given, Daniel can say, I know him whom I have believed. In fact, I like the version in, uh, is it um, Daniel 3? Shadak, Meshach, Abednego. They tell him, live long the king. We honor you, we appreciate you. But please know. <laughs> Yeah, please know concerning worshiping another God, not us. I wrote here God is fully committed to those who willfully commit to Him fully. Praise the Lord. God is fully committed to those who willingly, not on convenience, commit to him fully. The second quarter, there's something we have noticed. And this is well captured in scripture. Galatians 4 verse 19, Paul says that he longs that Christ may be formed in the Galatian believers. Because when we come to Christ, we have not, we do not automatically, it's not like a switch. It's not like a switch. You have to grow in the faith. You have to grow in Christ. Your relationship with Christ has to grow. That is why 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, but in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. So there is that part of growing in Christ. There is that part of setting apart Christ as Lord. Now, a Lord has authority over those they lord over. So if the Lord says we go south, you go south. Whether you feel like it or not. And so in the second quarter, we will be talking about making Christ Lord, enthroning Christ, setting him as king of our hearts so that we will do what Christ would do. He came here and he did what God would do. We will do what Christ would do. And that is what we want to do. And after we have challenged ourselves over those first two quarters, we will spend the third quarter challenging ourselves to practice. It's one thing to, to
to say things, it's another thing to do it. So in the third quarter, we will be challenging one another to activate the prayer and fasting that we will do in the third quarter. We will be praying for our eyes to open to see which areas can experience our faith, which areas in our homes, in our families, in our workplaces, in our business, which areas can experience our faith that God can ride through us and make himself known. We will be doing that. And that's why the focus will be living the faith. And as we close the year, we want to ask God to help us to hold on to that faith until he comes. Praise the Lord. That when Christ comes back, we will be found among those who are faithful. You know, Ephesians 6, uh, verse 13, puts it in a way that left me wondering what exactly is, is being said here. Let me just read it, just in case you're not able to read it from where you are. This is why you must take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist the evil day, and having prepared everything, take your stand. Now, this fails me a bit. Allow me to read from another version. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil come, you will be able to stand your ground. Then it says, and after you have done everything to stand. Praise the Lord. Why repeat standing? Because waves will come. People will be swept away. Challenges will come our way. Will you be found standing when the storm comes down? Will you remain anchored when the storms of life sweep over your life. Jesus did not tell us if problems come. He said when they come. Be of good cheer because I have overcome. And we too who are hidden in him have also overcome. Praise God. We want to trust God. We want to trust God. Part of the covenant we'll be making with those that will be praying together and making covenants, I am trusting God. We will be making covenants to break any evil foundations that may have been set in this university. So that the fear of God can cut across. We have an administration that a Christian in this university, and I'm proud of that. I have been privileged to be invited to join the VC in prayer in her own office. She fears God. How can we support them that their faith can stand? Because if it stands and works in the operations of this university, we can pray for believers that we don't know, but they are in this university and God knows them. And he will visit their offices and lit some fire in them. Praise God. And there will be a level of integrity, a breaking down of corruption and every wickedness that in this university, Max will not be getting lost. So challenges that we are going through will be brought down. We will be making a covenant with the heavens. That as long as we are here, if people want to find something wrong, it will be about integrity. If they don't want integrity and we have integrity, then we will, our roads will cross wrongly. And I'm trusting God that that can happen. 
and we will close the heavens of Ajuja so that no spirits will find their way to interfere here. And I know that can be done spiritually. If you don't believe it, read the story of Job. God gave a cover so that the man was secure. And whatever he held was secure with him. And we will trust God for that covering. That it may please God to give us Jacob and Judah for himself. So we'll not just be praying for ourselves for our own actualization. The I, me, and myself that is being preached around. Let me finish maybe with 2 Timothy chapter 3, I believe. I hope. I want to make reference to verse 4 and 5, but just allow me to read from verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self. Selfishness. Quench your thirst. By the way, you know, a lot of marketing appeals to I, me, and my self. That's what adverts are mostly about. So they are, they are looking at the perilous time. They will be covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, diso disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Oh, there's something called natural affection. Truth breakers. You know, you agree peace, they break it. False accusers. Incon eh? Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. <laughs> Have you heard that? So, you, you know, I find it strange. And um, we, we, we have many conversations with my wife. When, when things, wrong things happen to the right people. <laughs> have you heard those circumstances? So and so has been so faithful. How could he be sacked, surely? But you know, it's the faithful who are targeted. Yeah. People don't like good people. Because you spoil for them. You make them look bad in their badness. So anybody around them should be bad. Then you come there and you are good. What are you doing there? Should be sacked. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Allah. Okay. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. And that is what happens. Please note the warning that Paul gives in verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Turn away from them. I discovered both the world and other religions are not against Christians and Christianity. They are not. They are against this crop of people who have a form of godliness but without God. Let me tell you, I believe today if you are a serious Christian and like we want to experience God through this time of fasting and God gives you one of those graces and you are able to lay your hands on the sick and they get healed and the Lord gives you a job in Saudi Arabia. I can assure you Muslims will be coming and bowing before you. Because they are not against Christianity. They are against a form of godliness that has no power of God. And we want to pray this here. That there will be clear evidence that there is a God in me. There is a clear evidence there is a God in you. There is a clear evidence that there's a God in every one of us. 
That is our prayer. That is our desire. If you desire the same with me, please rise on your feet as we pray. I pledge allegiance to the Lord with all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor his command. I pledge allegiance to one more time. I pledge allegiance to the Lord with all my strength, with all I am. I will see. creation.